What's up guys? I am so eager to get started on this, mostly because it's a super condensed post-game show here, but so eager that I apparently jumped the gun on the ending of my intro animation. It happens, what can you do about it? But the Dallas Mavericks have finally snapped the six-game losing streak. They get a much-needed 122-116 victory over the Atlanta Hawks last night. On the road, yes, it was Luka versus Trey. We know what comes with that. Although, weirdly, this was a, a rare instance where it was not a televised, like nationally televised, I should clarify. Of course, it was on TV, but a nationally televised game. So we had a, a little bit of a unique look here. The, you know, we know the Mavericks, their six game slide. The Hawks have also struggled, they have been pretty ravaged by injuries here. And there was some opportunity for the Mavericks. Yes, they still had Trey Young. Yes, they still had Gallinari. They still had Clint Capella, who's been a beast for them. He's now leading the NBA with the current active streak of 17 games with at least 10 boards. It's an interesting case where that's now the, like the lead league, uh, league lead, league leading stat there because. A lot of times you just have guys collecting those like hotcakes. Uh, you're previously DeAndre Jordan types where they'll literally shove their teammates, even if that teammate is Luka Doncic, in the back to make sure they're the one that gets the rebound. But nevertheless, Clint Capella has been beasting for Atlanta and the Hawks still have quite a few weapons to work with. You see why they can be a good team, but the Mavericks made some much needed adjustments here in the last three games. The Mavs have absolutely gone out of their way to, to try and right the ship. They're not packing it in. They're not saying, ah, maybe we're not as good as we thought. They're turning a corner. And the Mavericks had three players last night score at least 20 points. They are 3-0 and this year when they accomplish that. It was Luka Doncic with 27. Kristaps Porzingis, one of his best games, if not his best game overall in the year, with 24 points for him, including some big, big minutes down the stretch as Dallas extended this lead and took it out. Now, that's not to say he had a perfect game. He certainly had a few moments there where he wasn't in ideal position for what you would want as my mic tries to droop snoot on me. But he, where he wasn't in perfect position and, you know, his lateral movement is still a little bit lackluster right now. So, not perfect, but I, I gotta say, it was a very good bounce back game for him overall, including the tip in there on a Luka miss layup in the paint. Very, very crafty tip in, very good play that uh, pretty much served as a dagger there, even though the Hawks were staging a furious comeback in the final minutes. And uh, also, you had Tim Hardaway Jr. with 22 last night as well, so big, big win there. Uh, KP also gives you 11 boards. I, I forgot to call that out for him. Luca, 14 assists, eight rebounds, two steals. You see a lot of good things happening here. Richardson as well had himself a good game. 14 points, six boards, two blocks, two steals. He took predominant charge, obviously, on Trey Young. And he largely did rather well. Now, again, I know Trey got going late. Trey Young ended up with something like 17 or 19 points. Let me pull that up exactly here, but... Until that final little flurry by the Hawks, Trey Young was not a major factor in this game. Trey Young had, let's see. So Trey Young does end up with 21 points, correction. He does make 21 points, nine assists, but a lot of that's a late charge, right? Dallas got this out to where with like three minutes and change, we're talking 12 point lead, something like that. And Atlanta whittles it all the way down to a two possession game Dallas gets a big bucket and they're able to hang on like Dallas won the rebounding advantage in the fourth quarter but overall for the game it's pretty much a deadlock it was 46 45 Atlanta including 13 offensive boards both ways that was big for Dallas that they were able to step up and do that and KP was getting some of those big rebounds as well for Dallas um, the Hawks end up shooting 50% from the field compared to 46% for Dallas. Dallas's three-point shot still 
lackluster for me. It's 33% last night, 13 of 40. The Hawks, 37%. So just that little bit better, including Trey, who hits two or three of them in that last little flurry, including one that's just a, a logo shot. We talk about how he has unlimited range. That's exactly what he was rocking with there. Now, Trey Young on the season... He's considered one of the premier three-point shooters. He's a very good three-point shooter, and his range is, at times, seemingly limitless. But sometimes, to a degree, it's like he, he can hit the big shots for sure. But going into that game, I believe Lou Dort, or it, it maybe it wasn't going into the game. Maybe it was going into the week. Lou Dort of the Thunder was just two made threes behind Trey Young on the season. So that was a crazy stat I saw that was like, man, I know Trey's had his struggles at times this year, so... That's probably a bit obscured where Lou Dort is playing above his head a little bit and Trey is struggling a little bit. But, you know, if we got to hear damn stats where it was early in the year talking about Luka's ineptitude shooting threes and we're comparing it with, uh, you know, LaMelo or, sorry, not LaMelo, Lonzo Ball or one of those other guys there, JaVale McGee, I think was one of them thrown out there early in the year, then Trey Young can take a little bit of heat on that criticism as well. So, regardless... It's a very good win for the Mavericks. You felt tight towards the end because you felt that charge coming and you kind of couldn't help but think in the back of your mind, like, it's the clutch. We know what this team has been like in the clutch in recent years. And they're on a six-game losing streak. And Atlanta's hitting ridiculous shots that a little bit lax as they broke the press. Uh, down the Mavericks where Tim Hardaway Jr. gets stripped. It's passed up ahead to Trey Young, who basically shoots um, a logo extended shot for three to cut the lead down, I believe, to three. No, it wasn't three at that point. It cut it to six at that point. I mean, just a ballsy, ballsy shot. And you're kind of like looking at it. That's when you start really looking side-eye at the Mavericks, like... Come on, guys, don't let this happen. You want to talk about demoralizing? If you let this one get away, that is demoralizing. They held it in check, though. They did enough to get the win. They made big plays when they needed to. Just enough. And that KP tip-in, that, that to me was the point where I was like, all right, they got it. Now, I know that's easy to say, given what the score extended to at that point. It made it a three-score game, a three-possession game. But that was uh, that was a major dagger that you looked at and you said good for kp good for the mavericks i'm actually surprised luca missed that shot because he splits the lane gets his man behind him and splits through the air between capella and i think trey young is trying to take a charge on the play and luca gets a clean lay off the glass clean lay off the glass talk about sounding sexual gets a clean look off the backboard and just doesn't doesn't uh get enough of the angle on the finger roll and KP right there reaching out with his left arm in front of the rim, as I nearly knock over my water bottle, in front of the rim, bats it in before Capella can grab the rebound. And Capella's a very good rebounding big, as we just highlighted earlier. So massive play there to get that board. Not just get the offensive board, but get the tip in as well. That's even bigger. So the Mavericks, one thing that was very, very advantageous for them last night was free throws. As a team, they shot 92%. That's 23 of 25. One of those missed free throws came from Tim Hardaway Jr. in the clutch. And Atlanta, it was like, Atlanta hits a three. Dallas splits the, tr uh, splits the trip to the line. Atlanta gets a bucket, like an easy layup. And you're just like, okay, we can't trade five for one, guys. Now we have to score. Like, that's just kind of how it started to dwindle down. But this was really a complete team effort. I know I stopped highlighting uh, Mavericks as I went through the top four guys, basically. But Dorian Finney-Smith also gives you 13 and 5. Brunson gives you 12, 4 and 4 off the bench. Maxi gives you 8 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 blocks as well. Your, your shot blocking was on full display last night. A lot of uh, block shots for Dallas in this game. And it made a big, big difference. Speaking of trends, Luka Doncic in the last six games, this is from Bobby Corella on Twitter, points out Luka Doncic in the last six games is shooting 87.2% from the free throw line. That includes two separate runs in which he was 10 for 10, which is the longest such streak of his career without a miss. 
pretty good, but he's trending upward. This is a guy who's in his first three seasons, well, two seasons, this is season three, shot in the mid-70s when you you know he can be at least low to mid-80s, if not better. And he's doing better in that regard. So if, if the three ball's not there right now, all right, fine. Get to the rim and convert at the line. That's what you got to do. If you're shooting 29% from three on the year, get to the line. You're leading the league in drives to the basket. Break them down, open things up, and just see if you can just get even more wide open opportunities for your shooters. To, your, to their point, they've got to make those shots, and they have not been making those shots at a near healthy enough clip this year. But, you know, you can only do what you can do. So break them down, break down the defense, get them the looks, and either they'll knock them down or maybe Mark Cuban and Donnie Nelson look at the deadline and say, ah, you know what, let's, uh, let's do something about this. This clearly isn't working. So something to consider there. Uh, another thing to call out, Carlisle finally makes a changeup to his rotation. Luka Doncic does not sit out the first half of the fourth quarter. He checks back in with 9 minutes, 34 seconds, and it makes a big difference in the turning point of this game as Dallas began to separate. And they separated, I think, as much as 14 or 16 points where they had it, and then Atlanta makes the, the furious charge. Dallas suddenly starts playing prevent defense, which I hate hate prevent defense like all right just don't let him get a three bitch you just let trey young walk into the lane and shoot a layup uncontested on three guys i know uncontested and saying on three guys three guys trailing behind him no one really contesting that's not that's not defense you just let him get a quick basket with zero resistance now it puts the pressure on you to go make free throws there's not the odds there's no pressure on him to make that layup the pressure is going to be on your shooters like tim hardaway jr who missed one of two free throws, and then they came back and hit a three and put you in an even tighter predicament. That's that's what you have to focus on. So we can have a different conversation there, but the Mavericks bench and role players played well last night. I liked the adjustment on the rotation, bringing Luka back in much earlier in the fourth quarter. I thought it helped Dallas really not just stop the bleeding, but seize control for the most part of this game. Uh, let me see here if there's anything else real quick I wanted to call out. This was an observation, and I saw it on the on the bench at the time, but uh, Nink Engstad points it out on Twitter, at Nick Van Exit. He points out that when KP checked out of the game with 257 left, uh, he clearly, he's visibly shown throwing something on the bench, and one of the Mavericks assistant coaches has to duck. KP was playing a very, very good game, as I said earlier, 24 and 11, uh, a couple blocks. He was having a great game, arguably his best game of the year. And he was taken out for the final 257. Uh, not not the final, but he was taken out at 257 mark when this occurred. And he's visibly frustrated coming out of the game. Make of that what you will. I just think KP is a competitor. He wants to be in there. I don't think he's throwing for the assistant's head. I just think he is frustrated. He's thinking there's no fans around or anything and just whips it and then uh, probably doesn't get the trajectory he's expecting. And so the Mavs coach is like, oh, shh, hit the deck, you know? Like, I don't know. I don't know what he threw. It might have been a wrap of tape for all we know, but something something that had quite a bit of zip on it coming off his hand. So um, after the game, the Mavericks, because we, we have a, a victory, so we have a title change in the Mavericks defensive player of the game uh, championship belt, whatever you want to call it. That goes to Josh Richardson. Carlisle says after the game about the Mavericks defense versus Trey Young, particularly Josh Richardson, he says, there was denial in the backcourt. There was shadowing. There was trapping. You've got to keep your head down and just keep executing. And I thought the guys did a great job of that. So your defensive player of the game, because it's a win, the title belt changes hands, is Josh Richardson now. So for whatever that's worth, Josh Richardson take a bow, I guess. But the Mavericks get a much-needed win. They bust a very bad streak that they've been on. And now they're going to have to turn their attention to the Warriors. Now, the Warriors, they've certainly got the ability. This time, it's different than last year. Obviously, you have Steph back. But the Warriors are in a situation where they're not as available and healthy. They're without a center right now and this is good and bad 
it means KP, if he's able to keep up with the pace, should be able to eat. They're going to put Draymond Green on him. Draymond Green's been running the five for them because they have injuries to Kayvon Looney, James Wiseman as well in uh, Golden State. And so as Bobby Corella points out, uh, Draymond moved to the five, Pascal back, uh, played back up five, and as a result, the Warriors are probably going to play fast. You're going to see potentially a lot more small ball, but I'd like to see them still give KP a chance, let him try and eat a little bit uh, due to that size advantage, kind of like he did last year against the Rockets in the bubble um, and uh, in that first game where it was like 150 to 148 especially. But that's something to keep, a, uh, to keep an eye on. You are also going to have to contend with Se uh, Steph Curry, rather, who is shooting 50% from three his last six games. So the dude is cooking. The Mavericks, um, this year in Mavs wins, Bobby points out, the Mavericks have held their opponents to 29.3% from three, but in the losses, they've held them, or rather not held them, they've yielded 40% from three. So yeah, that's going to be a trend to watch. Is Steph's red hot shooting going to present major problems for the Mavericks in the sense that it's going to trend towards a negative defensive performance and a potential loss? And we got them back-to-back -back games, so they got to do something. As for this uh, final closing point here, people frustrated still with the Mavericks. They see, hey, they're, they're playing harder, yeah, but they're not good enough. Yes, they get the win here, but they nearly blow it. This is all true. But the Mavericks' key rotation of Luka, Josh Richardson, Tim Hardaway Jr., Dorian Finney-Smith, and Kristaps Porzingis have played just 36 minutes together this year. 36 minutes. Over the course of four games. That is probably your most defensively, that's probably your most dynamic lineup in terms of defensive prowess and surrounding with your scores, right? Your Hardaway Jr., obviously, we know what Luka can do in his all-around game, and KP. So that is a, that's a significant call out there. We have not had the squad this entire time, hardly. They're all there now, so let's see. Let's really pay attention now these next couple of weeks and see whether or not this team can actually build on some momentum and they desperately need to build they are what what is their record now it's like i'm gonna take a look here i want to get this specific as i call this out not just their record but where they're 13th in the standings at nine and 13 they are seven and a half back but before you fret they are what, four games back of the four-seeded Nuggets? The four-seeded Nuggets are 12-8. and eight. It's not that far. You're early. It's not like you're trying to make up four games in the last 10 or last 15 or even 20. You've got time. You've got more than half the season to work. You just need a little bit of momentum and a little bit of rhythm. And maybe now assuming they can stay healthy, whether it's from physical standpoint, like the Hawks had some guys beat up, or, by the way, shout out as well to Maxi Kleeb on the defensive end for holding Danilo Gallinari in check in that game. Very, very underrated there. Gallinari uh, is, a, is a dynamic weapon for sure for that Atlanta team. I don't know what Gallinari ended up with, but I know that uh, he was very much bothered by Maxi. Gallinari ends up with... He gets 19, but he's 4 of 11. He's 9 of 9 at the line. He's a guy that the last... Last year, Mark Followell pointed out he shot 89%, but essentially the last 3 or 4 years, he's been 90 plus percent at the stripe. So, he's got to get more than half his points, or essentially half his points, at the foul line. 4 of 11 shooting, 2 of 8 from 3. Maxi Kleba doing work. But let's see what this team can do. Assuming that they don't have any physical injuries, assuming they don't have any more brushes with health and safety protocols, this team still has potential. Whether or not they're going to be as good of a shooting team, particularly three-point shooting team, as we want and hope, 
or expected. I don't know about that. I'm not willing to go that far yet, but I am willing to say, as I have said all along, this team is better than we have seen yet. So let's just see. But that's going to do it for my time. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drop a quick like on this video. Uh, subscribe for more of our content. If you want to become a member, you're going to get access to, uh, to new original content. You're going to get to see it two full days before the rest of the channel. This is for any prospect originals or just general original content that Dallas Prospect produces. This will not affect the live stream or post-game schedules. Those will remain as, as always. It's not like I'm going to hold off two days uh, after a game and shoot a video and then make you wait two days on the channel to see it because you're already on to the next game. Not doing that, but this is for original content that I am producing for the Dallas Prospect. So until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace.